Hello friends, so today we are going to talk about 10 golden rules for any coding interview. The rule number one defines that if the given input is a sorted array or a sorted linked list or a sorted array list. So meanwhile, like any kind of sorted linear data structure, then definitely we need to check that whether we can solve this problem using either binary search or using two pointers because uh, there are many examples and countless problems that are of sorted array kind of problems. And here, here are just few examples of these. If we see rule number two, it defines that if we are given any particular question where we are being asked to return any like a sort of elements amongst the given total n elements. So the question could be like, give me top three elements from these five elements or give me like a uh, bottom three or maximum three or something like that. So any if that kind of question is given 99% we would be able to solve this problem with a heap. So this is the number one thing that should click in your mind the moment you see a problem like this. And if you want to see a couple of examples, you can check out these videos. Now, don't worry about the examples. I am going to post every single example for every single rule in the description. So if you want, you can directly go there. Now, if we see rule number three, this is a pretty trivial and common rule that whenever you see any kind of a graph or tree problem, most likely they would be able to solve using depth first search or breadth first search. Because depth first search and breadth first search, they are the two mechanisms to traverse over any graph or any kind of a tree structure. And there are countless examples for this kind of problem as you can see over here. Now if we see rule number 4, this defines that whenever we need to check all the permutations and combinations of any given input. Now this input could be any sort of like an array or a string or a matrix or a 2D matrix, 2D array, whatever it could be. Whenever we need to check any kind of permutations and combinations, most of the time we would be able to solve this kind of problem using backtracking or breadth first search. Because what backtracking or breadth first search allows us to do, it allows us to iterate over the given input in a fashion where we would be able to see all the permutations and combinations and we would be able to make some meaningful, meaningful judgment out of it. If we see some of examples, these two are really good examples and I highly encourage to check these examples. Because if we see the, uh, these kind of questions, they are not like the easiest solutions that come to your mind the moment you see the problem. But if you know this rule and if you know that we could use backtracking or breadth first search, it could be really helpful. Now the next rule is that whenever you are able to come up with any solution that is a recursive solution, all the recursive solutions can be solved iteratively using stacks. This is like a golden rule because many times what would happen in your interview that if you come up with a recursive solution, your interviewer is going to say that, hey, can you solve this iteratively? And if you know this rule, it's going to be really helpful. Now, moving on to rule number six, whenever we are given an input array and if we see the, or if we are able to make a solution that runs in big O of n square time, then there are two possible solutions that are even better than big O of n square solution. And the two solutions are so first solution is that we can actually use a hash map to solve this problem in big go of n time and big go of n space complexity this is a golden rule this is like one of the most important rules in my opinion and the second option is that if we use sorting in the same given input then we would be able to solve this problem in big go of n log n time complexity and big go of one space complexity so whenever you see big of n square solution always try to think that which approach is going to be better if your interviewer is asking that give me a solution in better time complexity use a hash map if your interviewer is asking that uh, give me a solution where you don't need to use any extra space use sorting and if we see some of the examples these are really good examples and if we see that yes do some question the number one question in the lead code is actually based on this problem now if we see rule number seven and it defines that whenever any particular problem is asking us for a maximization or a minimization which means optimizing any kind of input then we can solve this problem really easily using dynamic programming and this is the key to identify any kind of dynamic programming question because whenever you see that in a problem they are asking you to optimize uh, and get the result in like either maximize form or a minimize form then think if you can use dynamic programming it would be really helpful here are few examples these are also really popular questions and they have been asked by like top tier companies and they love asking these questions so i highly encourage you to check this out and keep this rule engraved in your brain the rule number eight is 
that whenever we need to find any kind of common substring or whenever we are dealing with any set of strings or any set of substrings most of the time we would be able to solve this problem using try or hash map this is a very golden rule for any kind of like a substring related problem because most of the time uh, interviewers love asking these questions because try by itself has very good real life use cases where you can use it in autocorrect or dictionary or predictive search there are a lot of real life cases where this can be used so that's why this is a really good rule to remember and uh, here is one of the examples for this particular kind of question if we see rule number nine it defines that whenever we are dealing with a linkless problem and we are being told that we cannot use any extra space then if you use like two pointers one fast pointer and one slow pointer and start them both at the beginning you would be able to solve this problem really quickly with very efficient in a very efficient way what you would do is that first pointer is going to do like two jumps at a time and second pointer is going to just do one jump and that way you would be able to come up with a solution faster and also you won't be using any extra space uh, here is a very good example uh, this question is to detect that whether you can identify this uh, cycle inside a linked list and this is a very good approach to solve this problem now if we see the rule number 10 the final rule this defines that whenever we are dealing with any kind of problem where we need to uh, do a word search manipulate bunch of different things try to find or try to maintain a dictionary try to do any kind of predictive search so any particular use cases uh, like with the strings most of the time we would be able to solve this problem using a try or a prefix tree so keep this rule in your mind because this would be really helpful for, with a lot of general type of questions and uh, this is one of the examples of this rule so do check it out now i want to do give a shout out to designgurus.org because they were the original ones who created this list of 10 rules and i was able to find these rules from linkedin so i will be posting the linkedin post in the comments as well and also at the same time i'm going to post every single example that i mentioned in this video so you can check out them and uh, i hope these rules make sense to you and uh, thank you so much